I am sure that if you're watching my videos, you are running some kinds of network-wide DNS sinkhole like Pi-hole. In this video, I will show you how you can exclude some devices from specific block lists when you're using Pi-hole. Let's get into that right after this. So you, now you're running Pi-hole, all the devices in your network are benefiting from the blocking capabilities of ads and telemetry. But you want to exclude some devices from specific block lists. Like for example, you define a set of block lists which should be applied always. And then you have a specific block list blocking TikTok and you want some of the devices in your network still be able to access TikTok but benefit from that default block list you have defined, right? So they will benefit still from blocking ads and telemetry from other websites and services, uh, games, etc. But they will still, those devices will still be able to access TikTok unblocked, right? And luckily, Pi-hole gives us the option to do that. Let me show you that in the configuration. So this is my Pi-hole running on this test system in my lab. Let's go to block list real quick. And as we can see here, I have three block lists defined. One is the default one. If you install Pi-hole, this is the default one which is being installed. And then I have a, another one added, the OISD one. And I have a block list added in here that's blocking TikTok. So now what you need to do is define groups. So in the left menu, let's go to groups. Let me see if I can enlarge this slightly so you need to be in the groups i have already created a group the idea behind this is that you create a group then you add clients in that to that group that means the clients in your network because the pi hole can track clients in your network based on ip address mac address arp requests on your network so so you need to create a group that's the first option or the first step then you need to add clients to that group and then the the third option, the final step is go into the block list and enable or disable them for specific groups. That's the way it works. So as you can see here, I have already created a group which I named YouTube test. Now I need to add clients to that group. So I'll go to clients. And as you can see here, this Windows 11 workstation, which I'm using is already added to that group. So you need to you have a drop down option here for the known clients. Those are the clients that Pi-hole can track based on the network. But of course, you can add a IP address here as well or a MAC address as well. So if it sees the traffic coming from that source, it knows what to do with it, right? But in the general situation, it should present you with a drop down with all the clients it knows on your network. So in my case, I have already added that Windows 11 client. That's why you don't see that anymore in this drop-down list. So add the client or select the client here and give it a group assignment, right? So in my case, I can select multiple groups. So this is this is basically what I'm what I was telling you about differentiating between groups because those block lists will be member of a specific group. And now that client is a member of one of those groups. And that's the way you enable or disable block lists for clients. So if I add a client in here, if I just select something in here and I add the client and I enable the default and the YouTube test group assignment for this client. Now, every block list which is added to those groups will be applied to this client. That's the way it works. So add your clients in here. So now go to the lists option. You will see all your black block lists in there. And those block lists can be made member of a group, right? You can see the column group assignment. That's the way you differentiate between groups and which block lists are being applied to which groups. So in my case, if I click the OISD one, I say this is the default one or in this in this case i applied it to that youtube test group on which that windows 11 workstation is a member of right so i added that but now i can disable 
the TikTok block list for that YouTube test group. So if I deselect it and say apply, now this block list is not applied to clients in the YouTube test group. I can still apply it to other groups, right? Like the top group, as you can see here, that's the default group. That's the default group created. If we go back to group assignment, you'll see that there is always a default group enabled here. That is because there needs to be the default, right? So if I go back to lists and I say that Stephen Blacklist one, enable it always for the default group and also for the YouTube test group, I say apply. Now the OISD, I also wanted to apply it for the default groups and also for the YouTube test group. And the TikTok one, I only want to apply it to the default group, not for the YouTube test, because I want all the devices which are member of that YouTube test group be able to access TikTok, right? In this case, this, this Windows 11 workstation. So then I will only select the default group there because this block list will only be applied to the default group, right? So as you can see here, there is a little bit of thinking and planning involved with this because you have to define the specific groups you want to use uh, in your network and then which devices will be members of which groups. And the same goes for the block list. You need to define, you need to think about which block list you want to add to which groups, right? So in this case, I'm going to enable that TikTok block list only for the default group, but not for the YouTube test group, because I want this Windows 11 workstation still to be able to access TikTok and benefit from the standard blocking, which is being applied from the, the other block list in there, right? So I will select default and say apply. And now, as you can see here, the last block list, the TikTok one is only being applied to the default group, but not to YouTube test. Let's open up a new tab and let's go to tiktok.com in here. And as we can see, we are able to access TikTok and browse all videos in here. If I go to the pie hole, if I go to query log, you can see that TikTok is being requested by this client. This is the client I'm, I'm on, right? So let's see what the IP address is for this client real quick. Let's open up a terminal on this Windows client. And if I do IP config, this is the client, the 192.168.5.102. This is the client which is requesting pages and Pihole is resolving them for that client. Now, let's watch what happens if I go back into lists. And now I will enable this one also for the YouTube test. Let's do that. Say apply. Now this block list is being applied to this Windows 11 workstation as well, because it is, I have selected in the block list of Pihole that it should be enabled for that group as well, right? And there in this group, I have my Windows 11 workstation. So, and because this is Windows, let's clear the DNS cache real quick. So we flush the DNS cache on the local machine and we will also, you can restart your browser because your browser still has a DNS cache. It knows how to trans still translate TikTok to a IP address. And just to make sure that the browser is not playing us, we will open a new private window just to make sure. And in this window, let's try and reach TikTok.com. As we can see here, it is not able to resolve that address anymore. And that's how DNS sync is working, right? It is blocking your client from resolving specific DNS names to IP addresses. So now if we go back to our pie hole, we should be able to see that TikTok is now being blocked for this Windows 11 workstation. There it is, the query, it was blocked because it was one on the it was on one of the lists which I am using to block TikTok. And this is how you do that selective blocking in Pihole for specific clients. I mean, maybe there are some people at, at, in your home, at your house, who still want to be able to access those services. 
and you need to exclude them from your general or from the, all the block lists you have in your pie hole. This is the way you can set it up using groups and clients. Make sure that you think about uh, how you want to set it up, the memberships, etc., because it can get very complicated if you have large client lists or large block lists. We are we don't want to break things, right? And we don't want to create loops as well. So make sure that you think in in advance, think upfront how you want to set it up, which clients you want to allow to which block list, right? So they will benefit from those block lists, but which block list you want to exclude from those clients. So again, it can get very complicated, but this is the way to do it in PyHole. It's GUI based. It, it's very straightforward. Just think about how you want to set this up and in a way that it is maintainable for you of course. As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you've learned something new today. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button below this video. That helps out my channel a lot. And for now, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.